FN pistols, typically not my striker fired polymer handguns of choice, but you guys knew that already. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with the FN 5 series. I just have other subjective preferences. However, I can become a little bit more promiscuous when you're talking 10 millimeter. It wasn't that long ago when only Glock was making 10 millimeter polymer frame handguns, but now you've got Smith Wesson, you've got SIG, even my boys at High Point making the JXP10, getting into the 10 millimeter game. Today, FN has thrown its hat in the ring with the FN 510. 10 mil, really amazing, and I think that it outperforms 45 ACP in nearly every single metric. 45 has a well-deserved reputation for being a powerful man-stopper round. 10 mil can generate hundreds of foot-pounds of energy, more than 45 does. It's comparable to 357 Magnum in BDE levels. That is ballistic dynamic energy. But even though 10's more powerful, you get greater capacity in the same size platform. 10's got the same diameter as 40 S and W, but it's usually packed into a 45 size frame, meaning you'll get an extra three rounds or so in the exact same size gun with 10 mil versus 45. Side note, some of you may be saying James, but the FN 545 that just came out in 45 ACP has the same standard 15 round capacity as the 510. This, the 15 round magazine that comes with the FN 510, is flush fit. The 545 15 round magazine is not. And you know what? You can functionally use this video as a review of the 545 as well, since they're virtually identical firearms other than the magazine issue I just mentioned and obviously the caliber. To wrap up this FN rant, the 45 is generally better for suppression, as most 45 loadings are naturally subsonic, and 45 does have larger bullet diameter, expansion being very important, but the greater power and capacity of 10 millimeter outweighs a few hundredths of an inch in expansion and better suppression, for me at least. That's probably why 10 mil has been catching on fire in the past couple of years. FN says, this is the highest capacity 10 millimeter handgun on the market. That is, of course, marketing bullshit because really this is just the pistol with the highest capacity magazine included with purchase, a 22 round beast of a magazine. The traditional connotation of the nomenclature highest capacity means highest capacity with a magazine that sits flush fit with the grip not with an extended magazine. So FN's gonna inadvertently start an arms race here to see you can ship a titty mag with their gun and call it the highest capacity whatever. It's like saying my Jeep is faster than a Ferrari from the factory after you strap the included jet engines onto the fenders. Not exactly accurate. That all aside, the 510 is an interesting little package. It feels more compact than it really is. After bringing it to the range, shooting it, I thought it was going to be comparable in size to a Glock 19, for example, rather than, say, a full size like a Glock 17. But when you compare them side by side, the 510 and the 17 are very similar in most dimensions. The 510 is a tick over 31 ounces, about 6 ounces heavier than a Glock 17, and about a third of an inch thicker, also a couple ounces heavier than the Glock 20. But FN seems like they took a page from SIG's book and they cheated the grip on the 510 to make this gun feel smaller and more comfortable than it actually is. I don't know how they did it. It's weird. Now, even though my hands do make it look smaller than it really is on video, look at this close-up of 510 fondling. Doesn't it look smaller than the dimensions let on? I'd say you could probably conceal carry this, although I don't know what the holster situation is right now for this brand new gun, the 510. That does mean that this seemingly smaller pistol feels like it recoils more than other competing full-size options, but as you see here, the gun still puts out excellent accuracy. It's a little zippy. Dude. Still like all in one big hole, 20 rounds, but uh, oof, God, you know, polymer, this thing's light. It's pretty small actually for a, uh, a 10 mil. So, I mean, it is, it's poppy. Even though the 510's ready for a red dot using FN's so-called low profile optics mounting system that they claim is compatible with every major optics footprint, 
I just used the kind of weird but extremely functional suppressor ready night sights and I was still very happy with the accuracy at seven yards. Accuracy is really good for a gun that is this poppy. I mean, we just tried Fiocchi and uh, Magtech, or Arms Corps. Fiocchi and Arms Corps, both of them were, were pretty hot out of this thing just because of how light it is having the polymer frame, but it still shoots pretty damn accurately, as you can see here. I mean, look at that. That's the first two mags out of there, and then there's the second. That likely had something to do with the trigger, which by my measurements, even though they say it's six pounds on their website, four and a half pounds. I mean, I gotta say, it's a pretty damn good trigger right out of the box. Probably the best trigger for a polymer frame striker fired 10 millimeter out there right now. But to be fair, you can count the competition on one hand and that includes a high point. So let's not take that trigger comment too far. That's kind of the thing with a 510. It comes very well featured out of the box. Great trigger, 578 by 28 threaded cold hammer forged target crown barrel, ready for a suppressor, red dite ready, tall night sights, extendo mag in the box. That sets the 510 apart from other pistols in the 10 mil class. It's fully dressed when you buy it. It'll still probably work for concealed carry where you get 15 rounds of 10 millimeter on deck, which is nuts, with a 22 round backup magazine. And although I'm not a 509 owner, I've always found the 509's mag release and slide release to be better than most competing pistols. The 510 comes with an ambi mag and slide release, just in case your mom dropped you on your head when you were a baby and you turned out left-handed, you poor son of a bitch. We shot several types of 10 mil at the range, Arms Corps, Magtech, Fiocchi, we had no issues whatsoever. We didn't shoot any hollow points, but we did use those truncated cone rounds that have a, a flat nose profile similar to what you would get with say a hollow point. No issues at all. That said, this was a light review at the range. We only shot about 250 rounds for this gun. I mean, because Christ, 10 mil is expensive, but all 250 rounds were trouble free. Although there's really no point in suppressing 10 millimeter because all 10 millimeter is supersonic and it's all loud as shit. My favorite party trick with 10 mil is loading up a mag of 40 S and W to see how it shoots. 40 S and Dub, wisely, the spokes guy I talked to at FN during SHOT Show, and I asked him about the 510 and whether or not it could shoot 40. He said that if you shoot 40 through this gun, you're gonna blow your hands off. So, probably the smart thing to say. I don't think he was telling me the truth, but, you know, I get it from FN's perspective. You don't wanna tell people to shoot 40 through your 10 mil, but I bet, I bet it's gonna work. Might even be good. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. <laughs> oh shit. I mean, decent accuracy too. I mean, you got, I, I was just peeling them off. Wasn't even really trying, swear to God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I'll take it. I mean, from eight, seven, eight yards, great. As with pretty much every 10 mil auto I've fired on TFB TV, the 510 has no problems with 40 s &W either. I'm not sure how many of you own a 40 caliber suppressor or a 40 cal host gun, or if you did, whether or not you'd be willing to publicly admit it. But one attractive option with a 510 having a threaded barrel is the ability to use 180 grain subsonic 40 s and for a little bit less recoil and a lot less noise. Something to think about to make this pistol more fun if you're into BBCs, meaning big black cans. You can Google it right now at work if you don't believe me. As far as downsides go, not many for a 10 millimeter. While I have subjective preferences for other polymer frame pistols, as we sit here today, Objectively, the 510 is a contender just because it's unique. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention MSRP is 1139, woof. It's a stout price, but the 510 is a European made firearm by a manufacturer with just two letters in its name, meaning you know it's gonna be over a thousand bucks. And to its credit, the 510 does seem to fill in a gap in the 10 millimeter realm. There's simply nothing else out there that comes with all of these features in 10 mil right out of the box. So I'm not gonna bitch about the price too much, although I'd prefer to see a non-threaded model available to save a few bucks. 
Also, I've got to mention that when I had the 509 for review, mine did rust pretty badly, but that's after I threw it in a saltwater bayou, and that was six years ago. I hope that finish is no longer an issue, but if I didn't mention that in this video, I wouldn't be doing my job. That said, I've had this one for a few months now, and it looks fine. I haven't cleaned or lubricated it at all. FN makes a smart play here, offering something unique. Since they were a little bit late to the 10 mil game, if you're gonna be introducing a product into an ecosystem where you already have established players, like I said, SIG, um, Glock, they're offering similar design, similar options, but offering something that isn't already available can be that foothold that you need to break into the market. And I think that's what FN has done with the 510. Who's gonna buy the FN 510 Tactical? I called it a niche pistol, but sheesh, it's a pretty cool niche. You're looking at somebody who may wanna carry an accurate optics ready 10 mil with the ability to suppress it right out of the box, basically like an Alaskan lumberjack ninja who needs this to protect himself from grizzlies or other people who are both hardy enough and unstable enough to be living in Alaska. Personally, I'm holding out for a non-threaded version and to see what holster options are going to be available. But I will say I was very happy with the FN 510 and I think it's the best FN 5 series pistol out there when you look at its capability, the caliber, and all the features it comes with. We may be reviewing a 10 today, but my love for you is an 11. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Think about, by the way, we don't accept money in exchange for reviews on TFB TV. So think about supporting us on Utreon or Subscribestar. That's utreon.com slash TFB TV or Subscribestar.com slash TFB TV. Think about supporting us because we give away four guns a month to our $5 and higher supporters. We randomly draw four people, congratulations, you win a gun, and we randomly give away one $250 gift certificate to somebody on our $25 tier, only 100 members in the $25 tier on Subscribestar and Utreon. Thank you as usual to Ventura Munitions. I got all this 10 mil from them. I buy my own 10 mil from them when I personally look for ammo. They've been supporting us for years. And Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Check them out if you're thinking about picking up an FN 510. I'm just glad you're watching. Take care.